Jerry Carlisle, for your grace and your tireless work on behalf of Texas Baptist during the past year as president. And your leadership teammates, Jeff Johnson and Byron Stevenson, who with Kathy Hillman will continue to build on the work you've done together. Let's thank them, please. And David Hardage and Steve Vernon. Steve? Steve here? There's Steve. David Hardage and Steve Vernon, who, thank you. They provide day-to-day -day leadership from the Baptist building. And uh, Texas Baptist really couldn't have finer leadership. And we are, we are in good hands. And, and as Steve mentioned yesterday, the, the rest of the team that works in the Baptist building, works in the field, uh, in our institutions. Uh, Texas Baptists are really blessed, and we're glad to be a part of that. I also want to thank Chad Chaddock for his work this year in chairing the Texas Baptist Committed Board. His selection to succeed Michael Bell in January was the work of the Holy Spirit, as first I, then Michael, then one board member after another recommended Chad as chair. Nobody else was mentioned. We all felt led of God that Chad was the right person. He has led us this year in responding to challenges and helped move TBC forward, particularly with one new initiative, which I'll address in a few minutes. And, and in addition to Chad, I'm blessed to work with a board that is made up of gifted and gracious Baptist leaders who are committed to keeping Texas Baptists informed and free. Let's, if you're a member of the TBC board, would you please stand? Let's give them a hand. But I also want to thank you for your faithful support of TBC through the years. It's because of you that 2012 has been a year of growth for Texas Baptist Committed. When David Curry retired as executive director in September 2009, our board, on which I served at that time, found it necessary to take time to reflect on where we had been and where we needed to go as an organization. We were led by first Steve Wells and then Michael Bell as board chairs to honestly assess our role in a Texas Baptist environment that had changed significantly since the battles of the 1990s. On the surface, TBC was quiet for a time. Some supporters thought we had gone away and were pleasantly surprised over the past couple of years to discover that we're still here. But nothing was quiet for our board. For that first year after David retired, we met face to face almost every month because we were committed to the understanding that if we were going to keep doing this, we were going to make sure we did it right, that we meet today's challenges, not yesterday's, that we form the right partnerships, that we employ the most effective and principled strategies. Well, TBC is no longer quiet. In the first few months after I assumed this leadership role in January of 2011, we produced 71 videos called Baptist Briefs, each lasting from two to three minutes on Baptist history and principles. That spring, we began publishing a weekly e-newsletter, TBC Midweek Baptist Roundup, since renamed TBC Weekly Baptist Roundup. Last year in Amarillo, Texas Baptist Committed had our first breakfast at the BGCT in three years with over 100 in attendance at 6.30 a.m. You'll remember if you were there. This year, we've strengthened our partnership with the BGCT church strategist and interim ministry teams. We've also resumed our membership mailings during the past year, and our number of donors has already more than doubled over last year. We've already seen an increase of almost 70% in the dollar amount of our donations over 2011's total. But we need to keep growing, and the challenges are great. Texas Baptist Committed is back at work. But it's a new day. As Chad mentioned, in the, in the 1990s, the battle was at the convention level. But the fundamentalists finally gave up the fight for the BGCT and formed their own state convention in 1998. Today, the battle is being waged at the church level. It's not as visible to the average Texas Baptist as the great fight over the convention. 
but it's more pernicious because it threatens the freedom of local Baptist churches throughout Texas. We hear stories regularly about the activity of the Southern Baptist of Texas Convention. They're growing, friends, but their strategy for growth is different than the BGCT's. The BGCT starts new churches, over 300 annually in recent years, compared to less than a tenth of that, only 25 to 30 by the Southern Baptist of Texas. Church starting isn't their strength, but church stealing is. They go into BGCT churches and tell lies about the BGCT, saying that the BGCT approves of homosexual behavior and supports a homosexual agenda, which is an out-and-out -out lie, telling the church that the BGCT doesn't support the authority of the Bible, telling the church that BGCT-supported universities are bastions of liberalism that they can't trust with their children, all, all reminiscent of what the fundamentalists did with the Southern Baptist Convention in the, in the 1970s. That's, that's how they did it. Unfortunately, they're, they're successful with this because the people in the churches oftentimes aren't well informed. All, all of the things that they're saying are not true, and, but truth just isn't a hindrance to the Southern Baptists of Texas. When a church goes pastorless, the Southern Baptists of Texas, and we hear this all the time, the Southern Baptists of Texas are there on the spot, offering to preach in the interim, recommending their candidates to the pastor search committees. They're able to steal churches because the people aren't well informed. That's why it's important that you continue your support of Texas Baptist Committed. We work with the BGCT because the BGCT has earned our trust. But we're fully independent of any entity, including the BGCT, leaving us fully free to keep Texas Baptist churches informed and armed with the full truth when the Southern Baptists of Texas come to call. And I'm encouraged that members of Pastor search committees, several pastor search committees around the state have called me in recent months asking for TBC's help, requesting information on pastoral candidates they're considering, even requesting resumes of pastoral candidates in whom we have confidence. These calls are my top priority. When I get a call like that, I immediately start working the phone and email to get the information they need. When Chad Chaddock and I met with David Hardage for the first time last spring, he told us that his top priority is pastorless churches, and Chad and I basically replied, funny you should say that, because that's our top priority too. A few weeks ago, I received a call from a BGCT church strategist who told me about a church that had just lost its pastor. Southern Baptist of Texas had already had a, a supply preacher in there preaching two weeks straight. Church strategist was trying to obtain some contacts in that church, so I canvassed our board and one of our board members gave me the name of a retired Texas Baptist pastor and friend of TBC living in that area. I immediately called him, and within a couple of days, he had sent me the names of several contacts in that church. I forwarded them to the BGCT strategist, and a couple of days later, he told me that he had spoken with those contacts and had since been invited to train the church's pastor search committee. That's the kind of help TBC can provide. This is our commitment at TBC to help keep Texas Baptist churches as places where people are free to serve out their call as they're led by God. We do not insert ourselves into local church situations because we respect the autonomy of the local church, but we want to respond to the concerns of members of those churches as they work to keep their churches free from the control of the Southern Baptists of Texas. We're here to help Texas Baptists and their churches and we're privileged to partner with the Baptist General Convention of Texas in that work. Chad Chaddock, Wesley Shotwell, and I met with a group of BGCT church strategists in March to discuss how that partnership can be most effective. One way we discussed is a new initiative that I'm announcing today, what we call the TBC Advisory Network. This will be a group of Texas Baptist clergy and laity from across the state, ultimately covering every region, who will network to keep us informed of churches that are in a ministerial transition, keep us informed of good candidates for pastoral and other ministerial vacancies, provide us with reliable information about candidates already being considered for such vacancies, and otherwise let us know where we can be of help. Today you have an opportunity to get involved. Fred Ader and Chad Chaddock are, are passing out some 
uh, sign-up sheet, one to every table, uh, where you can sign up to be a part of this network. We want you involved. Uh, this is a commitment that won't take a lot of your time. It's just a matter of keeping your ear to the ground and letting us know where help is needed, where we can help. At this stage, we envision this network uh, meeting as a group once a year at the BGCT annual meeting, but we plan to stay in touch with every member throughout the year. So that's an initiative that deals with our most urgent immediate priority, but it's also important that we look toward the future. The threats faced by Texas Baptists may change in form and venue, but they will always be there because there will always be those who want to dictate rather than empower and to control rather than cooperate. We need to show the college and seminary students of today why they should be a part of what we're doing at Texas Baptist Committed. I know of several professors in our Texas Baptist universities who have used TBC's Baptist Briefs videos in their classes. This is one way we're reaching out to students. In addition, I've been on several campuses and in various conferences this year and have spoken with numerous students one-on-one, -on -one, and I've been encouraged as I've asked ministry students, both women and men, about their plans post-graduation. Over and over, the answer has come back that they want to minister to those in desperate circumstances serious human needs, the severely hungry, human tra uh, victims of abuse and human trafficking, the people that Jesus called the least of these. These students are serious. I, I've been so encouraged to hear, hear what they want to do with their degrees. We're looking for any way we can strengthen our relationship with these Texas Baptist students to help them freely follow God's call on their lives. So if you're on the faculty or in the administration of one of our Texas Baptist universities, I'd love to talk with you and find out how we can together help get students involved in what we're doing here. But those Baptist Briefs videos aren't just for students. Almost two years after they were made available on, on our website, we get hits on those videos daily. Last year, a pastor asked for a DVD set of them and used them in two Baptist identity classes in his church. TBC is committed to educating all generations about our Baptist heritage and our Baptist principles. The Baptist History and Heritage Society has recognized and recommended TBC's Baptist Briefs videos and has provided a link to them from its website. And this summer, we even received a donation from, and you will find this hard to believe, we received a donation from the Southern Baptist Historical Library and Archives, accompanied by a request for a DVD set of the Baptist Briefs. So Texas Baptist Committed's videos are now available to researchers using the Southern Baptist Historical Library and Archives. God continues to surprise me. One other initiative I mentioned earlier, our TBC Weekly Baptist Roundup e-newsletter, has been extremely successful. More than 500 Baptists in Texas and elsewhere are opening the roundup every week and clicking on our links to Baptist news and opinion from a variety of sources, as well as keeping informed of upcoming Baptist events. Every conference I go to these days, I find people coming up to me and telling me how much they enjoy reading the roundup. What they're really saying is how much they enjoy reading Ken Camp and Marv Knox and David Wilkinson, but they find them easily through, through us and, uh, and others, you know, uh, Bob Allen of the Associated Baptist Press and, and uh, Jeff Brumley and others. Uh, we've got a lot of good sources out there. We've got, we try to put some, some interesting Baptist blogs that you might not find elsewhere, uh, put them in there, because there are a lot of good voices out there. And, uh, and so people are finding that useful. It's our way of helping Baptists stay informed and our way for TBC to stay connected with our friends and supporters from one week to the next. Finally, TBC has published a new brochure, and there are enough at each table for all of you to take one, and I hope you will, comparing the Baptist General Convention of Texas and the Southern Baptists of Texas. It's entitled, What Every Texas Baptist Church Should Know, Critical Differences Between the BGCT and the Southern Baptists of Texas Convention. Please take a copy and let us know if you need more copies for your church. We'll be glad to send you what you need. Along with all of this, we continue to do what TBC has always done, encourage strong, diverse, positive leadership for the Baptist General Convention of Texas, keep Texas Baptists informed, and encourage attendance and informed votes at the annual meeting. 
So this is where we are at this point, and I'm encouraged by our progress during the past two years. Uh, the talk that Dr. Hardage was going to give this morning, uh, and maybe he will at some, some point for us, I, uh, I, I'm so sorry. Uh, Kathleen Hardage called me last night to tell me that his fever had gone up and that he just wouldn't be able to be here, and I told her, well, tell him our main concern right now is for him to get well, and uh, we, he will speak for TBC at, at one point. We'll, we'll make sure we make that happen. But his talk was uh, to be entitled Going Forward, and that could well be our theme at TBC because we're looking forward to meeting the challenges of the coming years with the active involvement of our membership through the TBC Advisory Network and through contacts like the examples I cited earlier, concerned church members requesting our help. TBC is at work, and we invite you to continue to take part in what we're doing.